Hello again. Hope you're ready for another round of Sea Perch Science. Today, we're all about fluids. Fluids and their properties are important to sea perch. They help us understand about friction or drag as the sea perch moves through the water. They also affect how your sea perch propellers function. You probably think that all liquids are fluids. This is true most of the time, but not all of the time. One property of a fluid is that you can cut through it, like the way your sea perch cuts through the water. In scientific terms, this means that they cannot resist shear stresses. Other fluid properties are their ability to flow or their ability to take on the shape of a container. Did you know that all gases are fluids? And we can prove it. This cup contains dry ice. Dry ice is frozen carbon dioxide, a gas that makes up 4% of our atmosphere. As a gas, carbon dioxide is colorless and odorless. Carbon dioxide gas turns to dry ice when it reaches temperatures below minus 78.5 degrees Celsius. And what's really cool is that it turns to gas directly from the solid state, never passing through the liquid phase. This change from a solid to a gas is called sublimation. The gas is white in color, and it's easy to see as it sublimates from a solid to a gas. Now, back to the proof. If we pour the sublime carbon dioxide over the candle, it will put out the flame. And since I can pour it, a gas must be a fluid, but not all fluids flow the same. It's all about viscosity. Viscosity is a scientific term that describes the amount of resistance to flow that a particular liquid has. It may also be thought of as a measure of fluid friction. In other words, viscosity is the measure of how thick or sticky a fluid is. The higher the viscosity, the more difficult it is for an object to move through it. Thicker liquids have a higher viscosity than thin liquids and add more drag, causing the object to slow down. Maybe we should demonstrate. Here we have two containers. This one's filled with water and this one with corn syrup. If we take these two marbles and drop them in the containers, let's see how they react. So let's see how long it takes for each marble to sink. First the water, which your sea perch should be traveling through. Pretty fast. Now for your corn syrup. Definitely slower. Guess you're lucky, your sea perch won't have to move through syrup. True, but the viscosity of a fluid is related to drag, and that will affect your sea perch. Drag is the force that resists the movement of an object through fluid. Propellers, like the ones we'll be using for sea perch, are used in boats and submarines to move through the water. They work against the force of the drag. Airplanes and submarines both have propellers. They both do the same job, but they're shaped differently because they need to travel through different types of fluids. Water for submarine, air for plane. Household fans also have propellers. They create a rotational motion that converts to thrust or force, like this fan. When she turns the fan on, the propeller will create a type of force. And I feel a light breeze. But that light breeze is really air, a fluid, being moved around. With your sea perch, the propeller will exert a force on the water, thrusting the water backwards and moving your sea perch forward. If you are considering modifications to the propeller, you may want to investigate the workings of the propeller and things like the pitch. The pitch is the distance the propellers move in one turn, one full revolution, like the way a screw moves through wood. To change the pitch, you'll have to change the angle of the blades. But different propellers and different pitches have different effects on the motors. For example, if you increase the pitch, you may start off slower, but you should reach a faster top speed. That's if your motor's strong enough to handle it. It's all about figuring out the right balance. There's a lot more to consider than just assembling your sea perch. Definitely. And when you understand how things work, you'll get better at figuring out what works best. Just take your time and think about how each change you make will affect the overall performance of the sea perch. And we'll be back with more of the science to help you out. See you soon. Today we're going to work on the thruster assemblies. The thruster assemblies are made up of small electrical motors uh, that we attach propellers to. Because the sea perch is an underwater vehicle, we need to do some work to waterproof these engines to prevent water from getting in and shorting out the engines. The way we do that is we place them in these canisters and then use wax to seal them. So the first part about this is working to keep the wax out of the motors. We do that using electrical tape, tape off all the holes in the motor. All right, to tape up the motors, we take small pieces of tape and work our way around the shaft and bushing area of the motor. Once you have the pieces of tape covering up all of the holes,
use a pair of scissors to trim off the excess. Okay. And do the same thing for the other side of your motor, not forgetting to mark the tab next to the red dot so that after it's wrapped we can still identify the positive pole of the motor. And then again on this side, putting pieces of tape around and you'll need to get the tabs to punch through the tape just by pulling it down and over. And then again, use the scissors to trim that. Once you have the two ends taped off, the rest is done by wrapping the motor with your electrical tape. As you do it, keep it pulled tight, and it will keep the tape nice and smooth. And you want to get full coverage over all of the holes on the motor to ensure that then there is no wax that penetrates into the motor. Now one of the things that you want to make sure is that you don't put too much tape on the motors that they will no longer fit inside the canisters. And the easiest way to check that is to take your finished tape motor and make sure that it falls in and out of the canister. Once that's done, move on to your next motor and get all three motors completely wrapped. Now that we have our motors wrapped up, we'll need to hook our tether cable to each of the motors. So what we'll need to do is open up the Cat5 cable to get access to the wires. You only need to open it up a little bit at first, and in here you'll see that there are a blue and blue and white pair, an orange, an orange and white pair, a green and green and white pair, and a brown and brown and white pair. And then there's a string that runs along the inside. In order to cut back the rest of the sheath, grab onto the string and pull it back. And you'll want to clear about a foot, and that will allow you to peel back the outer cover. Once you get it peeled back, take your pair of scissors and just trim off the excess. Now, the C-Perch only uses three of these sets of wires. We utilize the blue, the green, and the orange, and the brown is not used. We do recommend that you keep it for future use. If you ever want to add lights or anything else, it's a nice set of wires to have that you don't have to run another set. Now each of these pairs will be hooked to one of the motors. So what we'll need to do is open up the wires so that we can get access to each of the two wires and strip off some of the covering using a wire stripper. You only need about a quarter inch of the wire exposed to solder them to the motors. All right, so we now have all three pairs stripped and ready to be connected to the motors. Now, the one thing we need to do before we do that is to take each of our film canisters and put a hole in the bottom for the motor so that the shaft can come out through and a hole in the top to allow the wires to go in. To do that, pick up your film canister and you'll feel that both on the top and the bottom there's a little rough nub that sits on the canister. Go ahead and using a fingernail scratch that off top and bottom. That's important to do because in order to drill a hole in the center you need to kind of go in the crater that you just created by ripping that off. Using the 3 32nd drill bit we will go ahead and drill the canisters both in the top and bottom. Do that for all three canisters, and then we can go ahead and pass the wires 
through the cap and then solder the wires onto our motors. Once you have your canisters drilled out, both on the tops and the bottoms, what we want to do is check each one to make sure that the motors fit inside without binding. A way to check that is take your motors upside down, put them in the canister. If the canister comes up with the motor, we need to make the hole a little larger. Use the larger 1 8 bit if you need to to open up that hole. Now that we have all of our canisters that we've checked, okay, we'll make sure that we feed our tops through the wires, or the wires through the tops, to make sure that they will be placed inside once we get the motors connected. If you remember, on each of these motors, we use the marker to mark the positive pole. So what we will do is take the solid colored wire, whether it be blue, green, or orange, and connect that to the marked terminal, just by placing it through and folding it over. And do the same thing with the other wire through the other terminal. And then you'll have them connected and ready to be soldered. And we'll do that now for all three of the motors. Once all the wires are connected, we're ready to solder these connections. So you take your soldering iron and solder. Go ahead and solder up each of these connections. 